Hi, this is an SSR Resident Education Committee Bites Lecture. And I'm Doug Mintz from Hospital for Special Surgery, going to be talking about joint diffusions. I'd like to thank uh, Alison Esteva, one of the SSR scholars, for her help with this presentation. Joint diffusions on x ray. Um, so, joint diffusions are important to identify on radiographs because they indicate that there's something going on in the joint, whether that's injury or arthropathy. Um, there's something going on. It doesn't tell you what it is, but it's important to um, look further. And we're going to talk a little bit about primary findings where you actually see the effusion and secondary findings where there's evidence of the effusion. We're going to talk about these five joints. So let's get into it. On the left here is an x-ray of the knee, a lateral x-ray, and we see uh, the Quadri uh, quadriceps tendon, and then deep to the quadriceps tendon, we see fat. And fat is more lucent than uh, muscle, for example. On the right, the quadriceps tendon is displaced, and it's displaced by this dense stuff. That dense stuff is joint diffusion. So this is a primary finding of a joint diffusion. You can actually see the effusion. There it is, displacing the fat pad. Um, in some knees, there's like this has, there's a big joint effusion. If we take uh, this patient and lay him or her down and wait for a while, that effusion layers out. So there's the effusion, but there's this line across it separating fat on top, fluid on the bottom. And this is a lipohemarthrosis, indicates there's a refractor somewhere. And this patient, because there's a regularity here, it was probably a dislocation of the patella with a little bit of a fracture of the patella. That's a separate type of joint effusion, but often you have to lie somebody down for a few minutes before it layers out. In the ankle, normally in the front and the back, there's fat. In the presence of an effusion, that fat is displaced and you see these densities being joint effusions. Again, a primary finding of a joint effusion. In the elbow, there is a fat pad anteriorly. The fat pad tends to go pretty low down toward the joint, and we don't see a posterior fat pad. In the presence of an effusion, the anterior fat pad is displaced upward, and sometimes we see a posterior fat pad as well. So this displacement of the fat pad upward or here out of the joint is a secondary sign of a joint effusion. This is often called a sail sign, because it kind of looks like a sail, and is an indication of pathology. In the, in the case of trauma, it usually means that there's a fracture. In an adult, it's a radial head or neck fracture. In a kid, it's probably a supracondylar fracture. This is probably a fracture right here. In the hip, if we measure the medial um, joint, between the medial aspect of the femoral head and the acetabulum and compare it to the other side, there's a little bit of a difference. The left side is a little bit wider than the right side. That is a secondary sign of an effusion. So on the hip, we look for uh, lateral displacement of the femoral head as a sign of effusion, especially in kids. And just to prove it on the MRI, here we see decent size of a joint effusion, probably from transient synovitis. In the wrist, there's another fat pad. On the lateral view of the wrist, the pronator quadratus fat pad, so this is the pronator quadratus muscle, um, is this fat line right here, superficial to the pronator quadratus muscle. In the setting of trauma, that can be obliterated, and in the sending of an effusion, sometimes it's displaced. So this distance should be no more than eight or nine millimeters, a little longer, wider in uh, men than women. That displacement is, again, a secondary sign of the joint effusion. It's not a great sign, though. It's, it's uh, somewhat specific, but not very sensitive. Um, but that's the, the sign of an effusion in the wrist, again, possibly representing 
fracture or other pathology. So there we are. Um, it's important to look at the uh, soft tissues on radiographs to, to determine whether or not there are effusions. Effusions tend to be dense, except for that fat layering and, uh, and the lipohemarthrosis. And they can be seen as primary findings in the knee and in the ankle and secondary findings as in fat pad displacement to the elbow and in the wrist or uh, widening of the medial joint space in the hip. Uh, there's a good article about this in Radiopedia. Dr. Weissman's book now out of print is a great discussion, discussion of radiographs in general. And then uh, a couple of articles about the sensitivity and specificity of the fat pad sign in the wrist. But that's the least favorite of my signs. So thanks for your attention.